try it again. Good evening. Good evening.
Andrea Stuck, Daniel Lamont, and Don Lockwood. No, no, ladies and gentlemen, that was not them. That was a famous zip girl, the darling of the Clappers, Zep Commanders, and her new red hot Jay Cumberland's This is her ninth marriage, but I know this time it's really love. You've just heard the exotic star, Oh, Mara. And here's the happy new one. America's sweetheart and her new husband. They've been married two months already and they said it wouldn't last. The stars keep pouring in, anticipating the arrival of tonight's glorious stars. Here comes Mr. R.F. Simpson, the man who gave you all the Lockwood and Lamont pictures. He's accompanied by Roscoe Dexter and by Don's best friend and confidant, Cosmo Brown. R.F., can you speak to me? about tonight's premiere. Dora, I just want you to know that this is exactly what your audience has asked for. Those two lovers of the screen at their best. Thank you, Aura. And now, Rob, would you like to say a word? Say a word. I have three children. <laughs> Thank you. And now, Cosmo Brown, the man who plays the piano on the set to get Don and Lena in those romantic moves. Would you like to say a word? As a matter of fact, Dora, I would. Some of them I agree with everything R.F. and Roscoe said, and furthermore, I... Ladies and gentlemen, you should just see how it's no wonder name all over the world, like Bacon and Eggs, Lockwood and Lamont. Don, can you tell me, confidentially, are these rumors true that wedding bells are soon to ring for you and Lena? Well, Dora, Lena and I have no statements statements to make at this time. We're just good friends. Oh, but it doesn't look that way from those yummy love scenes you can play on the screen. Well, that's because my good friend Cosmo here knows just the right mood music to play on the set. Yes, I know. You and Cosmo have come a long way together. Won't you tell us all how you were discovered? No, no, Dora. Not in front of all these people. Oh, but Don, the story of your success is an inspiration to young people all over the world. Please. Well, Dora, if there's one motto which I've always lived by, it's been dignity. Always dignity. This was instilled in me by my mom and dad from the very beginning. They sent me to the finest of dancing schools. Where I met my lifelong friend. Cosmo Brown. We used to perform for all mom and dad society friends. They made such a fuss over me. Then if I was very good, I was allowed to accompany mom and dad to the theater. They brought me up on Shaw and Molaire. The finest of the glasses. This stimulated my love for performing. And to this, we added rigorous musical training at the conservatory. In a few years, Cosmo and I were ready to embark on our first concert tour. We traveled to the finest symphonic halls in the country. Fiddle as a fiddle and ready for love. I jump over the moon up above. Fiddle as fiddle and ready for love. Having to worry, having to care, feel like a feather, no man air. Fiddle as fiddle and ready for love. Soon the church bells will be ringing as we march with Ma and Pa. Soon the church bells will be ringing with the hey na na and ha cha cha. 
Hey little little, my baby's okay. Ask me a riddle, what'd you say? Then ask the riddle and ready for love. Gettysburg Address. What do I care with Gettysburg lips? Donnie, how do you let her talk 
to me like that, your fiance. My fiance. Lena, you've been reading those fan magazines again, haven't you? You shouldn't believe all that banana oil, door bailing, and call a stitch out. There's nothing between us. There's never been anything between us. Just air. Oh, Don, you don't mean that. Come on, darling, you'll be at Mr. Simpson's party. Uh, Miss Lamont, we're taking separate cars. Um, to avoid the crowd. Oh, I told Don, you see you there. Don, Don, Lena, see you there. Hurry up, Don, we've got a lot of press waiting. It's the price of fame, Don. You've got the glory and you've got to take those little heartaches that come with it. Why just look at me? I've got no fame, I've got no glory, but I've got... What have I got? I don't know what have you got, Cos. I've got to go. Cos, you can have all those things. You've got all sorts of talent. All you need is a, is a little drive. Drive? Why didn't you say so? The car's waiting. I think I'm gonna walk. I need the fresh air. Are you kidding, Don? The things will mob you. Do me a favor. Put on my coat, step into my limo, and jerk off Lockwood. Sure, why not? I love playing the role of the star. It fits so well. Not the coat. <laughs> Just the role. Thanks, guys. Oh, you can laugh all you want, but at least the stage is a dignified and honorable profession. 
And what have you got to be so conceited about? You're nothing but a shy though. You're not flesh and blood. Oh, no. Stop. What can I do to you? I'm just a shadow. Go away. Just because you're a big movie star, wild parties, swimming pools, you expect every girl to call a dead state at your feet. Well, don't touch me. Oh. Fear not, sweet lady. <laughs> I will not molest you. Nay, I am only a shadow, and you, my fair damsel, are but a figment of my imagination. You stepped out of a dream. You are to one. out of a cloud I want to take you away away from the crowd and have you all to myself alone and apart out of a dream say Kids, give me a break. Farewell, Phil Barrymore. I must tear myself from your side. Come on, kids, give me a break. demonstration of a talking picture. Notice it is a picture of me, and I am talking. Note how my lips and the sound issuing from them are synchronized together in perfect unison. with the mechanism of the projection machine 
as to run simultaneously with the unreading of the film. A talking picture. Thank you. Au revoir. Like Well, everybody, what do you think? It's a scream. Just a toy. It's vulgar. Oh, happy. I think they'll really ever use it. Oh, Warner Brothers is trying a whole talking picture with this gadget. They'll lose their shirts. What do you think of it, Dexter? Never match a thing. That's what they said about the automobile. Oh, yeah, you're right, Donnie. Where have you been? I was low. Hello, Lena. Oh, look, everybody. Don and Lena together again. My two little stars, aren't they great? Now on with the show, Sam the Cake. Don, this cake is just for you, full of delicious surprises. Oh, oh, it is an apple very more. Please. Well, I hope you're going to favor us with something special tonight. Perhaps have a soliloquy or the balcony scene from Romeo and Juliet. It's a lot, Oh, don't be shy. That's the perfect count for oh. Juliet. I like to dream of you the whole night through. Better known as a dueling cavalier. So what's this one about? 
Ah, uh, French Revolution story. I've got You're a French aristocrat, and she's a simple girl of people. And she wanted to give you a tumble. Well, it's Olivia. Why bother even to shoot this picture, Don? You should just release the last one under a new title. I mean, if you've seen one, you've seen them all. Why'd you say that? What? That's what that Kathy Selden said to me that night. Don, three weeks and you're still thinking about it? I can't get it out of my mind. Well, how could you? She's the first day in class of falling far lines in two or four. She's on my conscience. It's not your job. She, it's not your fault she lost her job with coconut growth. Uh, but I gotta find her. You've been trying to pound you, Don. Short of sitting out bloodhounds in a posse. Come on, Don. Snap out of it. I mean, you're Don Lockwood, aren't you? Don Lockwood? He's an actor, isn't he? And what's the first thing an actor learns? The show must go on. Come rain, come shine, come see or snow, the show must go on. And remember, short people have long faces, long people have short faces, big people have little humor, and even little people have no humor at all. And in the words of that immortal bond, Samuel J. Snodgrass, as he was being led to the guillotine, make them laugh, make them laugh. Don't you know everyone wants to laugh? Ha ha! For dad said be an actor, my son. But be a comic or one that will be stand Then in lines for those old hockey talk monkey shines So you can Shakespeare and be quite elite And you can charm the crazy nothing to eat Just slip on up and feel the world's at their feet Make them laugh, make them laugh, make them laugh Make them laugh, make them laugh Don't you know every my grandpa said go out and tell him a joke, but give it plenty of hope. Make him roar, make him scream, take a ball, bust a wall, swear to sing. You start off by pretending you're a dancer with grace, and then you wiggle till they giggle all over the place. Then you take a great big custard pie in the face. Make him laugh, make him laugh.
the song. I know. Where were you the other night at Wally Ray's party? Oh, I've been busy. And I know what you've been busy at, looking for that girl. As a matter of fact, yes. Why? I've been worried about her. Yeah, you should have been worried about me a little. After all, I'm the one that got the whipped cream in the kitchen. Yeah, but she didn't lose her job, and she did. You're darn too, she did. I arranged it. What? They weren't going to fire her, so I called them up and told them they'd better. Why do you rattle so Okay, John, you're madly in love with her. You must have recovered her shyness, too. Okay, Cosmo, little music.
looked good, Phillips, real good. I think we'll be able to meet the competition. Now, who was that young lady I just saw walk out? She looked familiar. Oh, I didn't even recognize her. I wanted to meet her in this role because I believe she has a lot of talent. I think she'd be great as a part of the kids' system. Magnificent. When can I hear her sing? Well, she's changing clothes right now. Why don't you wait a few minutes? Get cars in here. I'm already sitting for her. All I need to hear is sing for you. Great. Cosmo, there's a girl I want to listen to. She's really talented. Uh, now play us something while she's changing. Uh, the Entertainer. Ooh, my favorite. Where did you learn how to play like this? I read up on it. <laughs> you know, this was my favorite song growing up. After it was written. <laughs> New team. Play it faster, play it faster. How fast can you go? Good question. Oh. That's enough fun. That's enough. Oh, mm -hmm. business. Kathy, I'd like you to be Mr. Simpson. How do you do? How are you? I gather you're a very talented young lady. Thank you. Kathy, I'd like you to sing for Mr. Simpson now, if that's all right with you. Sure, I'd love to. Do you know you are my lucky star? What key would you like? E flat. Uh -huh. In my imagination, I search for starlit skies so bright. In my imagination, there I saw you in the night. On that day I found you, how could I help but to realize my lucky star was smiling right there before my very eyes. You are my lucky. Then the talkies came. You know, up to now I haven't thought much about the talkies. 
But if that's what brought you here, I think it's the greatest invention since the wheel. Now listen, Mr. Lockwood. Now listen, Mr. Lockwood. Just because you're a big movie star doesn't mean that a girl's gonna go to lunch with you just like that. Well, will you go to lunch with me just like that? Sure. Right this way. Main dining room. Don't you usually tear a pheasant at lunch with Miss Lamont? Now listen, Kathy. All that stuff, all that stuff about Lena and me is sheer publicity. Oh, it certainly seemed more than that. From what I read in the columns and all those articles in the fan magazines. Oh, you read the fan magazines? Well, I read them at the beauty uh. parlor, the dentist's office. Well, I only buy four or five a month. And well, you do achieve a sort of end. And all your pictures that would lead what would lead? My pictures? I guess now that I think of it, I have seen eight or nine of them. But I still insist. If you've seen one, you've seen them all. I did say some awful things that night. I deserved them. But I must admit, I was pretty much upset by them. So upset that I couldn't think of anything but you since then. I've been a little upset too. Kathy? I'm trying to tell you something, but I'm such a ham. I just can't do it without the proper setting. What do you mean? Wait a second. A beautiful sunset. Mist from a distant mountain. <clears throat> Colored lights in a garden. A lady is standing on her balcony in a rose trussle bower. We add 500,000 kilowatts of stardust. A soft summer breeze. And you look lovely in the moonlight, Kathy. Now that you have the proper setting, can you say it? I'll try.
but I'm content. The angels must have sent you, and they meant you just.